I'm Dr. Hadley Sharp. I'm a radiation oncologist here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about breast cancer in a general way, both about diagnosis, what the diagnosis means, some of the treatment options, as well as some of the people that will be involved in your care. As a radiation oncologist, I'm a cancer doctor. Radiation is my medicine. In addition to radiation oncologists, with a diagnosis of breast cancer, you'll often meet a number of doctors, including a surgical oncologist who's a cancer specialist who will perform the surgeries and operations you might need. You'll meet medical oncologists who will talk to you about anti-estrogen therapy as well as mostly chemotherapy. Pathologists will be involved in your care even though you might not meet them. They'll look at your surgical specimens or your tumor or the actual cancer cells under the microscope to give us as much information as possible about the best treatment for you. Radiologists will also be involved in your care. Again, you may or may not meet them, but they'll be involved in reading your mammograms, at times directing your biopsy, and mapping the surgical procedures for some of the, the surgical oncologists. With a diagnosis of cancer, you can find yourself asking many questions. It's natural and, and really human nature to ask yourself, what could I have done differently, or what might have caused this tumor? It's, it's important to think that although there are strategies and, and techniques we can employ to reduce our risk, both with diet, exercise, minimizing alcohol intake, um, just generally being healthy and taking good care of ourselves. There are things beyond our control. And, and many times there's just sporadic change in a normal cell that flips it over with a genetic mutation often where a uh, carcinogenesis takes place. And what does this really mean? We name cancers in many ways, both by the tissues they come from. You could have breast cancer, or you could have bladder cancer, but then we also name it by what it looks like under the microscope. And even within the diagnosis of breast cancer, there are different types of cells in the breast tissue that could change, become abnormal, and become cancerous. You might hear things such as invasive ductal carcinoma coming from ductal cells of the breast, or invasive lobular carcinoma coming from lobular cells. And there's other subgroups also that are a little more uh, rare or different variants of normal tissues in the breast become cancerous. And we have normal tissue cells, there's uh, constantly cell turnover, new cell regeneration, and in that process, sometimes there can be aberrancies, both genetic uh, or just damaged DNA. And the immune system is constantly surveilling our body, taking care of a lot of these abnormal cells. Abnormal cells can die their own death via programmed cell death, which is basically a fancy way of saying that a cancer cell knows something's wrong and it, it just uh, fades away and uh, kind of dies based on uh, programmatic internal uh, detection of the abnormality. And there's other ways that our immune system can also take care of these abnormal cells. But sometimes abnormal cells change, develop, divide, and actually can grow into a sizable mass, which you can feel at times, a physician can feel, or can be seen on mammograms. Sometimes precancerous cells um, can also be detected and eliminated before diagnosis or, or growing into a mass or a tumor. Or you can develop cancer cells that have not yet invaded, say, the basement membrane into the parenchyma of the breast tissue. When you have some of these pre, uh, excuse me, when you have some of these cancer cells that are not yet invasive or forming a mass, sometimes you might hear the term ductal carcinoma in situ because they have not yet invaded that basement membrane. They can still lead to, to uh, notable changes on a mammogram, including microcalcifications, which is then detected at the time of your screening mammogram, even though you can't feel a mass. This too can require surgery, at times radiation, and anti-estrogen therapy. So, as, as I like to joke, everything's fine until one of your six billion cells mutates. When that change happens, and you do undergo diagnosis of these abnormal cancerous cells, then you get to the point of staging. We talk about staging cancers. You might meet people out in the community, and once you're diagnosed with a cancer, it's also very natural that many people come up to you, um, tell you about their diagnosis or people that they know or care about that have also been diagnosed and treated for cancer. And they often refer to the staging and, and they'll often ask you, what stage are you? The staging of most tumors, including breast cancer, depends on many factors. With regards to breast cancer, when you refer to stage one, two, three, or four, those larger stage groupings are basically a composite staging of many other factors, including T, N, and M staging. T stands for tumor, and in many disease sites, we can refer to this based on size, the structures it involves, 
or dysfunction it might cause by invading those structures. And in the breast, this is often determined by the size, as well as involvement or uninvolvement of skin and other tissues. We talk about the N of the TNM staging, and the N refers to nodal status. Are lymph nodes involved? How many lymph nodes are involved? Where are those lymph nodes located? We also refer to M, metastases. This, um, the term metastases is used whenever a cancer, which starts in one organ, escapes, typically via the bloodstream or the lymphatic channels, and spreads to another part of the body. It sets up uh, with a tumor, say, in the brain or the liver that originally started in the breast. That would be breast cancer metastatic to the liver and not referred to as liver cancer. And when this happens, we might change our treatment approach and instead of treating just the local or regional area where the cancer is, we might take a more systemic approach and with chemotherapy, treat the cancer through the bloodstream as well. A little bit about how cancers develop. There's a lot of investigation going on right now, both in the labs and in the clinics across the country and across the world to try and understand more what causes a normal cell to become cancerous. There's a lot of consideration given to how the immune system has effects on eliminating abnormal cells. Because as, as normal cells and tissues exist, um, they are able to repair themselves. And once a cell becomes abnormal, a normal cell that, that has an abnormality, it can self-regulate and basically go through something that is called programmed cell death or another mechanism to basically eliminate itself to not divide and reproduce. However, at some point, a damage either occurs internally or externally to these cells that um, the normal cell becomes uh, cancerous and begins to divide rapidly and uninhibited. When this happens, one cell can turn to two, can turn to four, can turn to eight very quickly. And as they multiply, the cell can turn into a mass, which we might call a tumor. It could be a tumor that you felt, or maybe your doctor felt, or found at the time of a mammogram, and can be seen on imaging. With this division, the tumor can become bigger, with, if not removed, stopped, or, or uh, eliminated with treatment, but also it can spread to other parts of the body. And with uh, doubling rapidly and enlarging in size, these tumor cells can either form new blood vessels, which are not as good as our normal blood vessels, or invade existing capillaries and lymphatic channels. And by this, they can then potentially escape to other parts of the body, and these cancer cells can then develop in maybe the brain, the bone, the liver, the lung. And breast cancer, as most cancers do, has a pattern of spread in the natural history of the disease is well understood and can guide some of our treatment algorithms for um, more distant metastatic disease. Again, there's a lot of investigation going on, and there's something called the seed for soil um, philosophy of what causes cancer cells, especially from the breast, to arrive in the liver most commonly, or, or commonly in the brain. And uh, with examining that, we both are looking at the nature of the organ where these cancer cells commonly spread to, as well as the nature of those cancer cells themselves that uh, gives them a propensity to say spread to the bone. Um, these are all areas that we're continuing to learn much about, and there's much research being done currently and much work needed in the future as well. Some of the key factors in the diagnosis and development of, of breast cancer and then cancer's diagnosis in the breast, and some of the, the very broad overview of the treatment decision making, some of the people involved in your care team. You'll meet many other people that will help with your care, including nurses, therapists, technicians, navigators, schedulers. And basically, all these people come to work every day to try and take very good care of you. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Thank you.